What is going on guys? Will here. Welcome to the video. Now, I am intimately familiar with Greg's first cookbook. I got to know it so well that by the end of the 10K challenge, I was expecting a proposal, but then along came cookbook 2.0. We made eye contact. She looked beautiful and I was like, I just got to taste you. So with that said, today I'm only going to be having recipes from the new cookbook. Let you guys know what I think. Give you guys my honest, honest review. Now, Greg is a fantastic friend of mine. I love the guy, but just if I need to be, I'm going to be hard on him. So as you guys clearly just saw, I downloaded the pirated version, which is unfortunate. So it looks like I have to go buy the real thing. Now let's get the cookbook. Bought the book, back in the kitchen, time to make some breakfast. So we are making some anabolic French toast, but not any ordinary anabolic French toast. We are making the banana Nutella French toast roll-ups. You know, I have thought about rolling up my leftover French toast, can't see to be used for breakfast. Grapefruit's not always in season. And in the inside, we have this Nutella or Nutella spread. Now, I love Nutella. It's the only N-word allowed in my house, but it packs a big caloric punch. Can't have it all the time. So it'll be interesting to see how kind of this stuff measures up to the real thing. All right, so we have all the components ready to go. I have three pieces of bread because we are doing one and a half servings. I have my Nutella spread and then 45 grams of banana. So we got our little French toast blunts all prepared. Now we're gonna add it to the French toast mix. So the protein powder I am using all day long is Blue Star Iso Smooth, 10 10% off, link in the description. So I got the pan heating up. We're gonna submerge it into this French toast mix. Six packs of sweetener. Greg, holy shit, my friend. It is smelling good in here, y'all. So throughout the day with everything that we make, we are gonna be comparing it to very popular restaurant chain dishes of the exact same thing to see how they kind of add up. So for example, we're gonna be comparing this stuffed French toast to the IHOP stuffed French toast, which is around 900 calories. And the Cheesecake Factory is a brulee French toast that is 2,780 calories. I'm pretty sure it's actually the highest calorie dish in America. Like what are the chefs pumping into that thing? It should come with a, a warning, not syrup. I like what they have done here because wow, what a treat. Visually, I'm ready to pounce as the shape that you're looking for with the girth that is both exciting and intimidating. So the calories for this dish is 510 calories. So we're saving a couple hundred from IHOP and a couple thousand from the Cheesecake Factory. And looking at mine to the picture, the picture might look a bit better. It kind of reminds me of that time that my Tinder date showed up with, a, with an Adam's apple, but just like we did back then, we're gonna roll with it, you know? So I am excited and let's just get into it. Anything stuffed has my name on it. There is the inside. This actually looks so good. There might be another nut spread on the outside quite soon. Oh yeah, man. Tastes very banana bready. There's like a little echo of banana. Kind of shows that fashion will be late. Okay, that is interesting. Very interesting. That spread doesn't resemble Nutella at all but it is still very good. It is aggressively sweet though. Like usually I will add maple syrup as I'm eating it. You do not need to do that with this. Take a look at that. It's a thing of beauty. Okay, well that concludes breakfast and I know you guys are gonna say it's just because you guys are friends, but I actually wanna give this a 10 out of 10. I was trying to actually think of a way to not give it a 10 out of 10, but it actually checks all the categories. It, it tastes like a dessert. It is filling. You know, it's better than I thought it was gonna be, and that actually says a lot. Like, that filling was definitely the star of the show. That could be transferred to many different items, not just this. So, hopefully it keeps me full for quite a long time. So, up next, we have a workout, and I'll see you guys when we get there. All right, guys, so a couple hours have gone by, and now it's time to work out, so we're gonna be crushing some legs. So, I still feel super full, like, as full as I did after finishing the meal, as I do right now, which is perfect, because I'm cutting, eating around 24 to 2,500 calories. So, that meal did exactly what I set out to do. It gave me all the taste, without the calories. So we're about to hop into three sets, eight to 10 of squats. Okay, so just wrapped up three sets of 10 squats. 
Now we're gonna move on to some of the accessory work. We're gonna move on to two sets, 12 to 15 reps of Bulgarian split squat using the barbell. Split squats are deceivingly so hard. They win the hell out of you. Okay, so on to the last exercise for the legs today. This is gonna kinda like mimic a dumbbell sumo squat, but I'm gonna be using the cables here. So you're gonna stand like wide, way past shoulder width, toes kinda flaring out. Gonna grab the handles. And then I'm gonna go down like I'm sitting down on a chair while also extending my arms forward. Up and squeeze. 12 to 15 reps, three sets. The burn on that is next level. It also kind of like mimics a leg extension by having your legs come in and then fully extend. It's a really good one. All right guys, well that is gonna wrap up the workout. I'm gonna continue this full day beating and go and make some lunch. All right, so for lunch today, not only are we about saving calories, we're about saving some animals because we are making the vegan sloppy Greg sandwich. He actually told me he likes this better than the actual one with meat. So this one's very simple to make. All you need is 200 calories of vegetables of your choice, sloppy Joe seasoning, you need your vegan meat, then you need some sugar-free ketchup, tomato paste, tomato sauce, and of course, your regular white ass bread, which I am using, Bellagio, which will always be my regular ass bread. So the first step was to put the vegan meat into the pan and saute it down. So I'm using the St. Ives Italian veggie ground round, but before you sauce your meat, you must taste your meat. So let's just give this a quick little taste test here. I love vegan food. Oh, that's good. All right, so our toast is toasted and time to plate it up. So this recipe makes four servings, each serving 420 calories, and that includes the two pieces of bread. So apparently the average sloppy joe that you can find is around 635 calories. So you're saving like 215 calories just from this dish, and it smells really, really good. Like honestly, when I was sauteing it with all those veggies, I got kind of worried that the ratio was a bit off, but it really kind of like sauteed down, and it looks fantastic. Well, I tell you what, they do not call it sloppy for no reason. This thing looks like an absolute disaster. It kind of reminds me when he came over to make me French toast at my place. So, for 420 calories, that tastes like quite a good amount of food. And I mean, I don't know if he uses a fork and knife for this, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. Right. Oh, that is sweet. It bites you back a little bit. I'd go as far as to say, it tastes like signature in its sweetness. Like that G Hughes just like comes through so powerfully. The sauce is pretty ketchupy. I would like a little bit more tomato sauce-ness to it. So if I had to give it like an overall score out of 10, you know, I wanna give it, I wanna give it like a, an eight out of 10. It was so easy to put together. Like it's pretty much idiot proof, which I know that's what he goes for. But you know, if you are like a hipster looking for a meat fix, this is where it's at, man. Ma, you wanna come try some of daddy's meat? You can use this or you can grab your own if you want. I think I better grate my own. Yeah. Just because we don't really know where you've been. That's true. It's 2021, we all got something, you know? The only repercussion is that you might get a video on you. Uh oh. It's not like ketchupy or anything. It tastes like I just really think it's good. so ketchupy. Like all I can taste is my boy G Hughes. It's well, I've never had your boy's G Hughes, yeah. so um, it doesn't taste ketchupy to me. Really? Would you mm -hmm. have this again? It's 420 calories for two pieces. Mmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What no. would you give it out of ten? Like a nine. A nine. I liked it, it looked to be a little bit more spicy, actually. Okay. Like it, it That's what like, I was thinking. Like it could be like a little bit more spices or herbs, or a little bit more flavorful. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So, like Greg, it. you're even appealing to the older ladies. What? Just, 
What? How old? It's a cookbook for everyone. You know, that's, that's, that's the point. Yeah, it's yeah. not just for like the bodybuilders. Is anyone trying to like- Even old ladies. Yeah. Yeah. All right guys, so some time has elapsed and now I am trying to find a snack to make and it's actually quite overwhelming because I don't know what to do because this book is just so damn long. There's like 206 pages, so you know, there is cake, there is popcorn, there is protein bars, loaves, cupcakes, but I'm leaning towards the chocolate chip brownie cookie since I do have all the ingredients. And yeah, maybe we'll throw in a little bit of a blind taste test. So after conducting a little bit of a March Madness snack racket, we have concluded that we are making the chocolate chip brownie cookies. So the last time I made a cookie from Greg's recipe, it was so dry going down my throat, I fell asleep spooning in a bottle of Vaseline. But these ones look very, very chocolatey. And uh, from my experience, chocolate covers a multitude of sins. So I am very hopeful for these and we're gonna see how they taste. So we got our cookies here, I made eight. So 100 calories per cookie and they look to be quite dry. So a little bit scared, thankfully just emotionally, but I did bring cashew milk along the ride with me. So 2020 has been that oatmeal raisin cookie that you thought was chocolate chip. So I feel like a lot of my 2021 is riding on this outcome right now. Definitely way more moist than the first time I made cookies by Greg. It's, not, it's nice not having to use spit as the milk to go with the cookie. Mmm, they are rich. I don't know if you guys can see, they are super rich and actually really moist. The second I didn't see oatmeal in the ingredient profile, I knew there was hope. So, mmm, okay. I'd say the texture is just slightly off. It's not like one of those like incredibly good cookies, but you know, it, it definitely satisfies that craving that you would want if you want a chocolate chip cookie. So overall, I wanna give this an eight and a half out of 10. That's what I think, but what about my mom and my sister? So what we're gonna do is a blind taste test with a Subway cookie and a cookie from a popular bakery, Felix and Norton. So we got Greg's for the first one, then we got Felix and Norton, which oddly looks similar to Greg's, and then we got Subway, which are pretty big. So let's see what they think. I think I'm blindfolded a lot in this channel. That's what it's all about. It does not smell great, does it? No. Yeah, it smells a bit precarious, doesn't yeah. it? It makes me think that this is... I like the smell. I think this is Greg's cookie. Yeah, okay, so you know what? I, I don't like the smell of it, and I think that this is gonna... I'm gonna give this a three, but <laughs> I'm gonna have to guess that this one's Greg's, just because I don't know that... Subway and Felix Nord could sell so many thousands of cookies and it, it'd be like this. Um, I'm gonna give it a five. Um, I think also it is Dr. Greg's. This is Felix and Norton. Yeah. I can taste the chocolate. I can, yeah. But you know what? This is a lot sweeter than the last one. Smells good. Not great. You're very picky with the smells. I know. So this one I'm gonna say is maybe about a six, mm -hmm. a six, and I'm gonna say this is Subway. I'm gonna give this an eight. Eight? I think it's delicious. Um, and I think it's Felix and Norton. Oh shit, hey wait. This feels too big to be Subway, but I feel like it's Subway, because Subway is really flat. Okay, so this has actually no smell. It doesn't even taste like anything. You're yeah, honestly like, you're not wrong. This is very weird. This is really strange. I, I think I could actually be eating like paper bag. I'm gonna say that that is a two and actually it's a one. It's a one. One and it's Subway. I give it a three and it's Subway. Okay, so the first one was Greg's mm -hmm. that you absolutely Butchered. Yeah, what was that? Uh, it's better by the end though. Now I now in hindsight. She just see, realized she just doesn't like cookies. So the first one was Greg's and we got mm -hmm. Felix and Norton, number two. So yeah, we know oh. cookies. And then Subway. Yeah. So you actually both agree you think that the Greg's cookie was better than the Subway cookie. Yeah. Yes! And that and it's 110 calories more than Greg's. 
Okay, so you know what? Honestly then, if I was gonna just have a little treat, like a chocolatey treat, and it's only 100, then I might go with Greg's. If it smelled a little bit better, we could maybe add something. I didn't really think it smelled that bad. Yeah, you were like shook about that. Yeah. You smell it. It smells like damn brownie to me. No. 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 No, no. Okay. No. All right guys, so that was the taste test with my mom and my sister. I have no idea what happened to my mom there. Like the cookies did not smell as bad as what she said. I guess my nose has just been in a lot worse. What has so, your nose been in? What? What has your nose been in? Um, anyway, it's time to move on to some dinner and we're about to piss off a whole bunch of old Italian ladies because we are making the anabolic meat lasagna light. So there's two different lasagnas in this book. There's the light one and then the regular one. And I was trying to see what the big difference was and there is no difference. Like the only difference is that you're using low carb um, lasagna sheets, but it's two different recipes. I think that's a little bit of a, a flaw in the book if I had to critique it one bit. But again, it's all about the taste and the flavor. So it looks pretty easy to put together. There's a lot of components. And uh, you know, I'm most excited for this one of anything all day. So this is already super lean ground chicken and we're pouring out all of the flavor, AKA the fat. So it's already pretty dry. We're just making it even drier. All right, so everything is built and now it's time to add the singles cheese onto the lasagna, which just seems a little bit morally corrupt. You know what I mean? But like I've always said, if it feels good, do it, you know? All right, so there we go. That is the lasagna. It looks so big, but then it looks so small in daddy's hands. What the hell? Time to cook it. Time to dive into the anabolic lasagna light and there's no better person to join me than my girlfriend Katie because she's Italian and she has a nonna who cooks. Is that how you say it, nonna? Nonna. 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 Yes, nonna. Yeah, and she cooks pretty gangster lasagna, right? She does and she would smack me if she found out there was singles cheese on my lasagna. Yeah. So, on the plus side, this is 340 calories per slice and these are absolute bricks. So that whole entire tray makes six slices. That's a lot of volume of food for 340 calories. Yeah, it's heavy. Let's do it. So we're going to be comparing this to the Olive Garden, 900 calories. I've not you know, had Olive Garden. You know, at this point, we might as well see what Lunchables have to offer for lasagna. You know what I mean? It's like the toilet bowl for lasagnas. That layer of ricotta and spinach I didn't is, get there is yet. nice. You didn't get there yet? Mm -mm. Mm. Oh, that is good. Mm -hmm. Better than Nona's? It's good for anabolic lasagna. I hate to say it. I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah. One day we'll all pay for our sins, you know? Probably the best thing I've actually had all day. So what would you give this one out of 10? Is it like a 10 out of 10 for a low-calorie lasagna? So I I'd think say, yeah. I would say... Ten. This is actually like a 10. Again, I've given already one 10 today. And there's multiple reasons why I give this one a 10. One, volume, because I eat a lot of food. Mm. Two is obviously the flavor. You know, and it's just, it's just damn good. It's good. So Greg, you got, a, you got a 10 out of 10 from an Italian. You got a 10 out of 10 from me. What more could you want? All right, so as you guys can see, I thoroughly enjoyed the lasagna. It's pretty much over halfway done. But now it's time to move on to some dessert. So I made the chocolate peanut butter pumpkin cake. And the ingredient profile of that cake, I didn't really associate with cake, but again, I'll be open-minded. And there is chickpeas in here, like full-on chickpeas. It didn't even say to blend the batter, which I think it probably should have said to blend it, but it didn't, so I just rolled with it. And yeah, we are gonna try it out. And I'm actually surprised today. We made it the whole entire day without xanthan gum. So maybe I have been using the pirated version all along. So this is a pretty large piece of cake, and it actually is only four servings, 230 calories per serving. So it looks like we are having quarter of the cake. So that is that is a large slice, Gregory. Wow. And uh, in the recipe, it doesn't say 
for you to have any sort of frosting with it. So, you know, it could be kind of dry and only save the choking hazards for later tonight. So I actually made my own homemade frosting, which is one serving of Greek yogurt with eight grams of sugar-free, fat-free pudding mix. I'm just gonna mix it up and that's just a very easy frosting to add to this cake. And there you go, so there is my frosted chocolate pumpkin peanut butter cake. Time for the taste test. So you're not a lover of cake, are you? Huh? Are you what? a lover of cake? Yeah, I like cake. And my favorite thing about a cake is the icing wall at the back. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna approach it by its rear. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. I really wanna get like a chickpea pocket. It's not every day you have a cake <laughs> and get hit with a hummus pocket. That is strange, man. It tastes like it would be a dog cake, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, you know, like you have a dog cake that's like not so sweet, but like, it's like, it's still humanized food. Honestly, I think it tastes really good. You like it? I like it a lot better than the cookie. <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's good. It's, it's actually pretty good, but it doesn't taste like an actual like cake. It tastes like a cookie. It does of, taste like a dog cake. I know what you mean. It's like a cake with Cause more. there's like a slight savoriness to it. But I will say though, like Greg has definitely stepped up his game in this cookbook compared to the last one. Yeah. And I feel like if I did the 10K again, it'd be a hundred times more enjoyable. So Greg, if you want to do a 10K again and lose by a couple hours, let me know. Yeah, maybe I'll just stick to my wine. All right, so I forgot to rate the cake, the good old chickpea cake. I'm gonna give it a, a four out of 10. It wasn't great, it wasn't terrible. If I had to solely live off of it for an entire week, I could, but if I didn't have to, I wouldn't be running for a second slice, you know what I mean? So overall, it was a solid day of eating. I enjoyed pretty much everything I ate the entire day. He definitely stepped it up. This book, to the last book, like I said, uh, if I had to, if I had to uh, critique it at all, I would say, you know, at some points the instructions were just not that clear. You know, Greg has faced a lot of flack with this book and in the past about some of the recipes, like not really being recipes. And, and you know what, I would agree, but that's not the point. The point is to show people that, you know, you can make these small adjustments to a grilled cheese sandwich or a peanut butter and jam sandwich that are just so small, but that go a long way and save you calories. You know, it might be obvious to you to switch the cheese out, but to some people it might not be. And to be able to teach people that is invaluable. So I really like what he's doing. It's very important to teach people, you know, to save these calories and turn fitness into a lifestyle. So, you know, I overall, do I think the book is worth it? I think it is totally worth it. Because if you can find one recipe that you can have every single day and that you enjoy and it keeps you on your diet and keeps you in a calorie deficit, then how the hell is $150 not worth it to change your entire life, you know? So overall, I want to give this book, you know, from all my scores today, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. So great job, Greg, you actually killed it with this book. I'm, I'm very impressed. A lot of the recipes are super, super good. Highly recommend you guys check the book out. So that is gonna wrap up this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new and join the family, and I'll see you guys in the next one.